Hi everyone. In this lecture we want to talk about some applications of polynomial equations. So let's get started. Uh, here's a problem. Uh, it says the rectangular garden is 30 feet by 40 feet. And then part of the garden is removed in order to install a walkway of uniform width around that garden. And the area of the new garden is exactly half the area of the old garden. And the question is how wide is the walkway? So with any problem, you want to immediately start off by organizing your information. If at all possible, draw a picture. Now here's a simple picture uh, that would illustrate a rectangular garden. And, and then we've removed a walkway, of a portion of uniform width. And that's going to make the garden smaller, right? So let's go ahead and label this. I know that originally the garden was 30 feet by 40 feet. And we took off some of the of the garden. We reduced its size by an amount, and we don't know that amount. In fact, I'm going to call that x. So let's let's right away write down our variable. Let's let's identify it. Let's let x equal the width of the walkway. Okay, always always identify what your variable is and write it down so it's very clear in your mind. That's really the key to so many uh, of these application problem word problems. Now it's going to remove x on every side. It's uniform. So we have this little walkway going around here. Well that's going to reduce the the original width was 30, right? And if I if I take off x from this side and I take off x from this side, that means that this distance right here, which is the new width of the garden, that's going to be 30 minus 2x. And likewise, if the original width was 40, and then I, I subtract off, I take away, you know, so many feet on this side and so many feet the same distance on this side, then then the new length of the garden is going to be 40 minus 2x. So I know an area, it's easy to find an expression now for the area, it's going to be the width times the length. And it also tells me here in the problem that, that the area of the new garden is half the area of the old garden, right? Well, the area of the old garden, the area of the old garden was was 30 by 40, right? 30 times 40 is is 1,200. So that means the area of the new garden is going to be 600, right? So so I know that this area in here is going to be 600. And you see, this wasn't hard to come up with the equation. I just had to think through in terms of my variable. I have to write down my variable, then, then draw a picture, organize my information, and write down just the dimensions in terms of that variable. So what I've got here is I've got that the, the length times the width is equal to the area. So I'll, this is a simple geometric formula. You have to know that as well. So you do need to know your basic uh, ge geometry formulas. Uh, and then if I multiply that length, 40 minus 2x times the width, 30 minus 2x, that has to equal 600. Okay, so that's really the key to this problem is getting that equation. Once I have the equation, I can forget about gardens. I can forget about about uh, areas and lengths and widths, and I can just move into the realm of pure algebra, which is why algebra is so powerful. Now I can just just crank the handle, and here comes the answer. Okay, so so I have a quadratic equation here. I'm going to have to multiply this out, uh, get zero on one side. So let's multiply the first together. That gives me 1,200. If I do the outers, that's a negative 80x. The inners are a negative 60x. 80 and 60 is 140. They're both minus, minus 140x. Plus 4x squared uh, is equal to 600. Let's go ahead and, and uh, get everything on one side. 4x squared minus 140x. If I subtract 600 from both sides, I'll get plus 600 on the left here. 
Uh, looks like there's a common factor of 4. Let's divide both sides by 4 just to make my numbers smaller. So that'll give me x squared. Let's see, uh, um, 4 goes into 140, well half of 140 is 70 and half of that's 35. So that's minus 35x. And 4 goes into uh, 600, I think 150 times. So now I have to think of the factors of 150. That would give me 35 in the middle. That's a little bit bigger one. We could graph it on our calculator and find the x-intercepts if I need to. But I think it, uh, if we think of negative 30 and negative 5, uh, that will give me uh, negative 35 in the middle, and negative 30 times negative 5 is 150. So I'm going to get here either x is 30 or x is 5. Now we've got to go back and think, you know, x was the width. If I had a width of 30 that I was cutting off and I only had 30 to start with, I wouldn't have any garden left, would I? So, so this x equals 30, that one doesn't make sense in terms of this problem. It solves this algebraic problem, right? Because if I plug 30 in up here, I'm going to get two negative numbers that would multiply and give me 600. Uh, but it doesn't make sense for this application problem. So I just throw that one out and my answer would be this. So the width of the garden is, is uh, or the width of the garden path I should say, is 5 feet. Okay? And let's just do a real quick check on that. If I were to take 5 off here and 5 off here, that would be a total of 10 feet, right? That would leave me 30 feet here. And if I were to take 5 off here and 5 off here from the original 30, that would leave me 20 feet, and 30 times 20, sure enough, is 600. Okay, let's move on to another problem here. This is uh, says uh, the foot of an extension ladder is 10 feet from a wall. The ladder is two feet longer than the height that it reaches on the wall. And the question is, how far up the wall does the ladder reach? So the very first thing I did was draw a picture. You don't have to be a great artist. Uh, I just used some, uh, just a simple ruler here to, to draw these. And that's not hard. Anybody can do that. So it says the foot of an extension ladder is 10 feet from the wall. So I'm imagining that this is my ladder. All right. Let's, uh, maybe if we want to label that. And here's the wall over here, and it says that that's 10 feet away from there. And then it tells me something about the length. It says the ladder is 2 feet longer than the height it reaches on the wall. So, so it's talking about this height right here. Here's the height it reaches on the wall. Notice it didn't say it's the height of the wall, it's the height the ladder reaches on the wall. Okay, and, and then it says the ladder is two feet longer than that. So let's, let's call this x, let's, let's label our, our variable, let's let x be the height that the ladder reaches on the wall. And then it tells me the ladder is two feet longer than that. So x plus 2 is the length of the ladder. Okay? So, so the ladder here is going to be x plus 2. And I got the wall over here is x. And this is 10. Well, this is, this is a, a right triangle right here. And I say, oh, I could use the Pythagorean theorem to solve that. I know that in a, any right triangle, the sum of the squares of the two short sides is going to be the square of the hypotenuse. Okay? So by the Pythagorean theorem, again, this is a, a formula from geometry, a very well-known and, and important formula that we would need to know in order to do this. I would have that the shortest side 10 squared plus this other short side x squared would have to be the length of the ladder which is the hypotenuse squared. 
Okay. Now notice that that uh, all this makes sense. Everything makes perfect sense here, as it must do. And when you get the equation, we're not just aiming for some equation that will give me the answer in the back of the book, because we don't always have the back of the book. So I've got a hundred here plus x squared, and here I have to square that binomial. It's not going to give me x squared plus four, is it? Right? It's x squared, and then I I uh, remember what I call the eleventh commandment: Thou shalt not forget the middle term. So take this term times this term and double it. That's going to give me four x in the middle. And then I can go ahead and subtract x squared from both sides. So it's not going to be quadratic after all. And if I leave the 4x by itself on one side of the equals and then take the 4 on the other side, I'd have to subtract it. That would give me 96. Then if I divide both sides by 4, I'll get 24. Okay? So what that means, and let's go back to my problem. All right, let's answer the question. What's x again? It's the height the ladder reaches on the wall. So the ladder reaches 24 feet up the wall and it didn't ask for this but but x plus 2 that means the ladder's got to be longer than that right because it's going to be leaning up against it uh, and so the ladder is 26 feet okay all right one last problem here uh, says suppose that a flare is launched upward with an initial velocity of 80 feet per second from a height of 224 feet and its height uh, after t seconds is given by this formula and the question is how long will it take for the flare to reach the ground well I've provided a picture here but you really don't need a picture what's really really important in this problem like every other word problem is, is to read very carefully and again to identify your variables and they tell you they actually gave you the equation in this one this one's actually easier than the other two uh, because they they gave you the formula to use what's in, what's difficult and what's so important is just to identify your variables so when I look at this formula and, and it says here that it's height in feet h of t so so this right here this h value right there that's the height of the flare at the time t. And notice at different times it's going to give you different heights, right? So at time zero, right, I'd be at 224 feet. It hasn't hasn't been launched yet. That's this point over here. At time one, you're going to plug it in and, and the 80 times one, that's going to be the vo initial velocity pushing it up and then this is actually a gravity uh, portion of the equation that's sucking it back down. Um, so it's going to go up 80 feet in one second, but gravity is going to suck it back down 16 feet, and then you'll add that uh, with those combined to the 20, 224 feet it was originally, and it goes up a little bit. Okay. So so again, there's two variables in this formula: uh, the height and the time, and the time is in seconds. So in other words, if you tell me the time. I can plug it in and I can tell you the height or if you tell me the height maybe we can figure out what the time is and that's the question that's asked right the question says after how long will the flare reach the ground well so the question is when it says how long that's saying find time right and here when it says when the flare reaches the ground, well, let's see, what would the height be then? Oh, well, that would be a height of zero, okay? So this is saying find the time when the height is equal to zero. So it really, uh, if you just read very carefully, the formula is right in front of us. I just need to find where this height is zero. I need to solve this equation for t. Okay, so when I do that, uh, I just get a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and, and uh, divide both sides by uh, negative 16. I believe that negative 16 does go into 224. So I'll get 0 here is equal to t squared. 
uh, 16 goes into 85 times, so it'll be minus 5t. And uh, I don't remember, let's just double check here. 224 divided by 16 is in fact 14. Um, let's see, you got a minus, so that's going to be minus 14. Okay, so then I just solve that and I get t minus 7 times t plus 2 equals 0. That will give you t squared, uh, 2t minus 7t is the minus 5t in the middle. So I'm either going to get t equals 7 seconds or t equals minus 2 seconds. And again, the minus 2 seconds, that's not going to make sense in this particular problem. What it actually means is if you would have followed this parabola down, that would correspond to negative 2 over here, but that's not part of this problem. And then over here is the t equals 7 seconds when it hits the ground. Okay, so the flare hits the ground after 7 seconds.